Hello, my name is Sheila and I would like to welcome you to my podcast All About You. I love to listen to podcasts and especially conversations with famous people. However, I think everyone has a story to tell. Maybe a place you have visited, a hobby you enjoy or anything that you feel would be of interest. I want to have conversations with lots of different people and hear their stories. So if you have a story to tell, please contact me on my email allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com. Welcome to another All About You podcast. My guest today is Trisha Harvey, who is the mother of a previous guest, David Harvey, who talked about his ultra distance running. So I'm delighted to have another family member on the podcast. Today's conversation with Trisha is all about her journey of learning to sail. So Trisha, welcome to the All About You podcast. Hello, Sheila. Glad to be here. Where did this idea of learning to sail come from? Where did it come from? Oh, that's a question. Um, probably the fact that uh, I've always loved the water. I've always loved boats and um, probably started back when I was a child. Although um, well, you wouldn't actually call it sailing. Um, where I lived in, uh, in the city of London or East London, we were very close to um, Walthamstow Marshes and the River Lee, just at the bottom of the road. And um, I joined the um, school kayaking club and we used to do regular kayaking up and down the along the river there. Um, we used to do our practicing in the local swimming baths. One thing I could never manage was an Eskimo roll because I just wasn't strong enough. <laughs> but however, it was great fun. And um, then when I met my late husband, he was actually um, chaplain of the Sea Cadet Corps. So we used to go out quite regularly on this small craft um, when we lived in London. And again, it was up and down the River Lee. We used to um, attend many functions where we would, it would be very um, almost naval, you know, where the port is passed round. That was all great fun. Then I guess there was like a long break because, you know, I got married, had children, moved out of London. It already started, actually, later on in life when I moved down to South Sea. And of course, I'm surrounded by boats everywhere. Um, I used to sit on the seafront there and there'd be absolutely everything going past me. Ships of all sizes, boats, yachts rowing boats, kayaks, ribs, you name it, it went past me. And I probably photographed most of them. But I got a job in Hamble, in Port Hamble, which is really where it started. I was actually working in a Port Hamble marina for a company that um, did boat building, boat repairs, boat sales, international boat sales. We had offices around the Mediterranean. I was really, I suppose I was, I was really part of the boat building side. You know, I'd be up in the office there and billing everybody for obscene amounts of money for the repair of their boats and their refitting of their boats. And then, you know, as, as you gradually get to know people, um, I realised that a lot of my colleagues, people I'm working with, they were all sailors. They, they all knew how to sail. And because in the marina then, we had the most fantastic boats. Oh, my goodness. They were huge 60-foot racing yachts and smaller racing yachts. It was just amazing. It was a very exciting place to uh, to work for. And we had quite a few famous boats in, like um, Maiden, um, which uh, is a boat that well, I would have thought most people would have heard of. Um, we had a, another, we had Hugo Boss in for refits, um, another huge one called Leopard, all sorts. Um, absolutely amazing boats. And I thought, oh, I had an opportunity here, maybe... Maybe I could, you know, learn to sail properly because all I've really done is um, is kayaking. I had a chat around, you know, and a few people said, oh, why don't you go down to the local sailing club in the village? Um, there were actually three sailing clubs in Hamble. One of them did um, a club night during the week, you know, lots of... Uh, Boats would all get together with their crew and they'd go out into the Solent and they'd 
sail around the cans and, you know, raise the spinnaker and shout at each other and just basically have a bit of fun out there. You know, they did a bit of racing, who could get around the cans first. Yeah, toddled off down to the sailing club. Actually, and I rang them up first and uh, I, I worked with another girl who was thinking exactly the same thing. Wouldn't it be good if we could get into sailing seeing as we're here? And we thought also, it, you know, it, it helps you with your job because you, you, you recognise all the parts of the boat and, you know, and you basically know what your clients are talking about when they actually ring you or when they come into the office. So we rang them up and said, oh, um, you know, is there any chance of uh, us being able to get out to sail? Oh, yes, come down, they said. We're always looking for extra crew. So down we toddled, uh, down to the sailing club and um, right down on the shoreline in Hamble, met the secretary down there and she picked up the phone and she actually rang one of the boats that was out in the water at the time and said, oh, I've got two young ladies here that would like to learn how to sail. You know, and the response was, yes, we'll come and pick them up from the pontoon and take them out. So uh, along came this really amazing yacht, um, parts of the, uh, the pontoon down on the shoreline, and on we hopped. <laughs> and um, out we went into the Solent, Southampton water, and we were, you know, sailing around. And, uh, and the skipper made me sit next to him, you know, because I was a complete newbie. I didn't even know what a keel was let alone a bow and a stern or whatever um so i sat as a skipper and he you know, told me a lot of things about the boat and um and, and he had a crew of i don't know there must have been about six other crew they were all beavering around the way they do and i thought this is just amazing and what i really loved was i loved the motion of it i love the motion of sailing uh, and the following week again out i went on the same boat Gradually, you know, I, I got to know how, you know, what everyone's doing, what everyone's jobs were, how the boat works and everything. I gradually got to, I got to know a few more people in the, uh, the sailing club. I used to go every week to the club nights and um, I wasn't actually a member, but along I'd go and, uh, and then other um, skippers would say, oh, I'm short of crew next week, Tricia, would you like to join me? So I say, okay, you know, and the following week I'd go and hop on a different boat. And by then I was absolutely hooked. I just thought this was amazing, you know, in all weathers. Well, when I say in all weathers, the, the season normally started around um, when the clocks actually go forward. That's when the week, the weekly sailing starts. So that would start then, then it would finish when the clocks actually go back. So it was quite a long season. Some weeks that you'd go out and it'd be absolutely chucking it down, it'd be absolutely horrendous. You'd be soaking wet, freezing cold. And other weeks it would be hot, sunny, oh, and you wouldn't want to be anywhere else than sitting on the side of that boat. They, they I mean, they, they go at a fair old speed. You get a fair bit of wind and the boat will actually tear along. Oh, it's just amazing, wonderful feeling. And, um, of course, there's a lot of work to do on the boat because, obviously, when you want to turn, you know, there's a process, you know, this called tacking. You know, it's where the, you know, you've got to move the sails over to the other side of the boat. And so you're pulling in and you're letting go, sitting on, you know, you're, you're, you're transferring yourself from the low side up onto the high side to balance the boat. But basically, I was called ballast, I think. In those days, I was, because my job really was just to... Uh, run from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat, you know, so that you're balancing the boat. And it was, it was just wonderful. And, you know, I carried on doing that for quite a while and uh, got to know quite a few people down there and uh, sailed on other boats as well. And then I can't remember who it was now, but one of the girls said, Oh, we're going to have to get you interested in, um, in what we call the mobs and whales. And I said, what on earth are the mobs and whales? And they said, well, it's the dinghy sailing. And they have a dinghy sailing um, group down there called Mobs and Wows. Now, mobs means men on boats, but affectionately known as men on beer. And the wows were women on water, affectionately known as women on wine. Yes, yeah, so I thought this sounds good. So I um, met up with the group, I think, the following week. And um, I think by then I'd actually, I'd actually joined. I was actually a member. 
they're a great bunch. They're a really, really friendly bunch down there. They really were. They're, they're very welcoming. And they love newcomers because, you know, they like to impart their skill, you know, on, onto new people. So they always welcome newcomers because mm. they always need crew. And if you can imagine Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, there'd be like 30 boats out there, you know, so they'd all want crew. And then sometimes we'd sail at the weekends as well. I sort of eventually, you know, got on a regular boat. I was on a regular boat every week and I stayed on that boat actually because, you know, the skipper was great and, and, and the, the rest of the crew that I was with uh, were good. So I actually stayed on that boat for a, quite a quite a few years and, uh, and I introduced one of my workmates as well down to the sailing club so he actually sailed on the same boat as, as me as well so you know for quite a few years we all sailed together on the same boat which was great you know because we really got to know the boat inside out. I went and did my competent crew which is um, Royal Yachting Association qualification if you want to regularly sail then it's a good idea to go and get some sort of qualification where you sail for a whole week, you get instruction for a whole week at one of the sailing sailing schools, and there are quite a few sailing schools in this area. And the one I chose was one in Hamble, and it was five days actually on the boat full time, and you were with other people that wanted to learn how to sail. You know, you didn't know each other. You know, we came from different parts of the country, but however, we all got together, and we had um, an instructor on the boat and uh, basically we were taught how to sail for the whole week and it, I had a fantastic time you know I was out on the water we were going all around the solar stopping off at various places um oh I think we've stopped for places like Yarmouth on the Isle of Wight we go to Lymington to Poole um in the opposite direction over to the Isle of Wight the other side Enbridge you you but that that was basically your your training you know you were learning how to sail a boat um after i did that you know i spent a few months again just um you know sailing weekly times a week with the, my friends and the crews and then i did what you call um a day skipper so i did a day skipper royal yachting qualification at the same sailing school had to learn how to read the maps, read all the signs, plot courses. You had to recognise all the markers that were out there in in the water. All the boys, you know what to, what is what is a what is a cardinal marker and all sorts. And um, it's very much like a the highway code. You literally had to learn a highway code for the water. And to do that, it's five days. On the boat again like competent crew but this time I was like the skipper and all the other guys that run with me if they were if they were doing competent crew then they were really my crew but ultimately I had an instructor with me and previous to that I had to do when I was talking about the highway code there I went to classes which was one night a week for six months and you learned all the theory of how to sail, you learned about the weather and you learned about the tides and the tide heights and um, and all the markers and um, every every marker out there in the in the in the sea in the solar has flashes on it, so or it emits a light, so many flashes you know per second. Um, so you get to recognise all of those and you get to recognise. Um, not the shape of a boat, but you recognise where the lighting is placed on a boat that you can see in the distance. You recognise what sort of boat that is, you know, because through doing theory, that is part of what they teach you. Well, well, basically, yes, basically, it's it, yes, it's all the theory that, that's needed for you to set a course. You know, if I wanted to set a course from, say, South Sea to Limington or whatever, you know, I, I could plot it all on a map. And you've also got to, you, you, you had to get to know the, what they call the rules of the road because it's, um, you know, it's every sailor's duty to follow the rules and avoid a collision at all costs. So you've got to know the, the rules of the road. What happens, you know, if a boat, if a yacht's approaching you, what side do you go, port or starboard? So you learned all of that. And then with your five days practical, you learn how to sail properly and how to lead a team, you know, how to lead a crew. And that was just, it was fantastic. It was hard, 
really, really hard. And my instructor really put me through it. Oh, my goodness. And I thought, oh, do I really want to carry on doing this? But I did. And I passed. But, you know, going on for big, big boats that, that you know, that, that I've been sailing on. I was talking earlier about the mobs and whales and the um, the dinghy sailing. I actually got into the dinghy sailing and I found, funny enough, I actually, I think I preferred the dinghy sailing because I was master of my own craft. <laughs> so a dinghy um, sailing is just one person in the boat? Dinghy sailing, you, oh, it depends, yes. Um, the dinghy sailing I did, yes. Um, yes, I'd sail out in a, in a, in a one-man dinghy. Uh, and, so, and the club had one man dinghies. The club also had three man dinghies and two men dinghies. So we went out on all of them. I went out on all of them. But I did love it if I was in my dinghy on my own because I was actually master of my own craft, master of my own thoughts and everything. And um, so there'd, there'd be a fair old group of us that would go out every week. Well, well, actually, it was at the time it was every fortnight because it was being run by another you know, another lovely lady at the club. Eventually, she decided to um, hand over the reins because, um, yeah, we found at times if if we were if we were dinghy sailing once a fortnight, you know, we'd turn up, and if the weather was absolutely disgusting, you couldn't go out, so you lost a week. So sometimes you'd find yourself just sailing once a month, which isn't isn't really enough, you know, if you're learning how to dinghy sail. So, uh, but even, and I, and I used to nag and nag and nag and nag. Why can't we go out every week? Because the foxes all go out every week. And that's another dinghy sailing section in the club. They're real, you know, good professionals, not like us amateurs, we're all learners. So eventually she handed over the reins and I took over the group. I think I must have muscled myself into that club actually, because uh, I joined the committee, I got onto the uh, general committee. And then I started to run mobs and whales. <laughs> and I was still going out on, on the big boat sailing during the week. Anyway, so we, we, yeah, we started off with the, the dinghy sailing. The dinghy sailing was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And then that's what we said, right. So we actually started to go out every week. And at the time, we were just sailing, pottering around in the river, in the River Handle. We weren't going very far. And, um, and then it was one of the instructors... Actually, did I do? I did a dinghy qualification as well. I can't remember. Yes, I did RYA one and two dinghy sailing uh, qualification as well. And the instructor took us out out in Southampton Water in our dinghies. You know, we were like little ducks, one after the other, sailing down the river. And I think there was probably about six dinghies in the uh, when 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 I did my RYA qualification. And we went out into the uh, into Southampton Water and we had to capsize and we had to get back in the boat and right ourselves and then get sailing again. And, and basically, it really built up our confidence about sailing on, which was like open water to us. I mean, you know, Southampton Water, the huge cruise ships go past you. You feel like a little tiny ant, you know, when a cruise ship goes past you and you're in a little tiny dinghy. And, uh, and obviously, you've got to keep out the way of the main channel. But however, it gave us all confidence to take our dinghies out to South Mountain Water. So after some of us got our, our qualification, we, I then said, right, everyone, we're going to go out on South Mountain Water. And half the group said, oh, can't do that, can't do that, too scary. I couldn't do that. I haven't got the confidence. I said, yes, you have. I've done it. And Joe over there's done it. So... We gradually started to sail a bit further afield, further afield in our dinghies. So we'd sail down the river and then we'd go out to Southampton Water. And then when everyone felt they had the confidence, they absolutely loved it because there was so much space out there. And, and when you've got a, a decent bit of wind and you're in a dinghy, you absolutely fly along. And there's, oh, there's nothing like it. It's just amazing. Of course, every now and again, you know, you might capsize if you did it a slightly too fast tack or whatever, you know, or a gust of wind would tip you over if you weren't concentrating properly. But we all had fantastic fun out there. We loved it. And we carried on that, like that, for, for a long time, quite a long time. You know, and some weeks we'd go up the river and um, and then some weeks we'd go down the river. And depending on what the time, this was depending on what the tides were doing. Yeah, there'd be certain occasions where we'd get out there in Southampton Water, we'd be sailing around, and then the wind would drop. 
And we always, always had a safety boat with us. Always had a safety boat. Wherever, whenever we went out in the dinghies, we always had to have a safety boat. And that would be a rib with a driver and another crew member. They'd have a safety box as well, which would contain things like flares, first aid kits, all sorts of bits and pieces, radio. And um, they would just sit there on the water while we'd all be sailing around. And if uh, if we got into trouble, you know, if we capsized, then the, the safety boat would come over and, you know, help us right ourselves, you know, if we were struggling a bit. Um, but if the wind dropped, which it did on many occasions, then the rib would tie us all up one after the other, drag us back up the river, you know, back to the moorings. And we'd be, we would be like mummy duck and uh, all the little ducklings all behind, quite funny. <laughs> so that was really, it was just fantastic fun. Absolutely loved it. I mean, Eventually got, got my own, I got my own dinghy, got myself a laser, um, which I took out, so quite a few times. And I had it, uh, I had a little space in the dinghy park down in Hamble. Yeah, great fun, fantastic. Listening to your story, getting the job at the yacht company in oh. Apple was really the, the turn yes. of you getting into this. You saw the opportunity working there, you got to know some people, some people suggested. Yes. So that really was the start yeah. of your sailing journey. It was, it was absolutely, yes. One of the girls that I did work with was we both joined the company around about the same time and, she, and her parents used to sail so she was interested in sailing so you know I said oh well, I need to sail as well so you know we, we got together and we both went down there so maybe I would have done if I was on my own you know I'm, I'm not the sort to uh, sit back on my laurels and do nothing I'm more of a get up and goer type of person than a Big lazy bones. <laughs> I like I like activity. I like moving. I like doing things. I, you know, I'm not very good at keeping still, and and it keeps you fit. And the fresh air, amazing. That's right. You've you've met lots of people of different ages. You're out in the fresh air. You yes, have things to learn to keep your brain going. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah. you seem to have moved through with your qualifications at, at a, yeah. you know an incredible pace. So you bought your yeah. own dinghy. Yes, yes, I got my own dinghy. I had a laser dinghy, which is a one-man dinghy, very fast. They're, they've got the reputation of being very tippy. So needless to say, I did tip out of it a few times. <laughs> but, yeah, it was great fun. And then I introduced my grandson to sailing. Yes, yes, my, my grandson will be eight in May. The, the, the sailing club has a fantastic cadet section. Um, they are, they're, they're amazing where it comes to teaching children how to sail. And um, once a fortnight during the summer months, they'd have all the cadets there, cadet members, and it would be absolutely pandemonium. I've never seen so many kids in all my life in one club, you know, with parents all running around screaming. <laughs> But you know they'd all get in their little dinghies and they they would they, then there were safety boats everywhere. I've never seen so many safety boats. My goodness, um, because obviously when you've got a lot of children, you need a lot of safety around. And all these little kids with crash helmets on and things <laughs> and their wetsuits. They all. I used to go down and watch them on a Saturday, and they all have a, they were having a fantastic time. Uh, and and the chap who ran it said to me once, said. You've got, a grand, you've got grandchildren, haven't you? I said, yeah. I said, I've got um, yeah, my grand, grandson, Hendrix. How old is he? I said, he was about four. Bring him down, he said. I think it was three or four. I said, he's a bit young. No, we have a one-year-old down here. So I thought, oh. So I took Hendrix down <laughs> with his mum. And uh, it took a bit of persuading to get him into the water. I used to take him out to start with. I took him out on one of those blow-up kayaks. That they had down there, and he was quite happy, you know, in the blow up kayak. Uh, and then the following year, I got him into an oppy, which is a, an optimist dinghy, tiny little dinghy for kids. They're like tubs, little tubs on the water. I got him into an optimist, and I got myself into the optimist as well. I was absolutely folded and crouched underneath the, uh, I don't know how I got in it, I don't know. I was crouched underneath the boom, the sail. And he used to sit sit there with the tiller in his hand and I'd be telling him, you know, 
the things to do to get the boat going. And I put a little wind indicator on the uh, on the mast, you know, to help him see what direction the wind was coming from. He absolutely loved it. And um, I think we did that for a couple of years. And uh, and he's still a member. Obviously, COVID has messed everything up a little bit. But no, he, 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 he saw, yeah, he was, he, he was enjoying himself as well. So both of us together, grandma and grandson, a perfect opportunity, especially living so close to the water, for you to yes. get out there. Yes, and- yes. And I think you know, if you've got, I mean, my children, um, you know, David and Catherine, are not interested in the water whatsoever. They're not interested in boats. I think Catherine, Catherine would get seasick on the Gosport ferry. <laughs> so she's not interested in boats whatsoever. She, you know, she doesn't like. She, I don't. Yeah, she. I don't even. I, well, she's probably been across the channel, but she does get seasick very easily. And, uh, and David's into his uh, ultra marathon running. So um, there's me into my sailing. And I thought, well, you know, why not get the grandchildren interested in something different as well? You know, because uh, you know he plays football, and and David does his running and he does his music. So. They need to have as many interests as they can, you know, get their hands on, I think, you know, kids. It's just, it's, it's great education for them. You know, what better place to be right by the sea? Everyone sails. So, you know, they get the chance to do it. What do you think is the biggest difference to your life being part of the sailing community has made to your life? It's made to my life. It has, it's really given me something to focus on. It's something that I... But I, you know, I, I did kayaking in London, but, you know, you, there aren't very many big yachts or places that you can sail in London. And to actually move down to the coast and be able to get out onto the water, it's just, um, you know, I just lose my, I lose myself on the water there. It's amazing. It's difficult to explain, but it's, it, you know, it really gives me something to focus on. It's something that I really, 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 enjoy probably more than anything else that I've found you know it it just suits me I think I might have made a very good pirate (laughs) (laughs) sociable with all the different types of boats you've tried all the different yes you've got yourself onto the committees as well so you're helping to organize things that takes up quite a bit of your time as well it does it does take up quite a bit of my time actually because um yes I'm, i'm still on the general committee i now well funny enough because of covid um we had quite a good social scene down there i mean it wasn't vast i mean there were two other sailing clubs in the village which had a much bigger social social set than we did because we basically uh we, we you know we preferred to concentrate on the on the sailing but we had a bar down there which was which the, the bar is open three times a week it's open a, a midweek on a friday and um depending on whether there's cadets down there it'd be open on a saturday and it's usually open on a sunday afternoon and uh, we had a bar manager you know we had staff but then covid hit we uh, unfortunately had to let the bar manager go and because you know if you're not running any events or anything you're not making any money so the only money we had coming in was from the membership you know unfortunately the bar manager had to go and we decided then that because you know we we, we needed to um you know we, we didn't want to empty our coffers we decided to run everything on a volunteer basis so um I now run the run the bar for them whenever it's open, and it hasn't been open very much. Um, and that gives me something something else to focus on. There's one thing I another thing that I used to do was that we had um, a thing called the Winter Series, which um, is the real it's the, it's advertised in all the um, all the yachting magazines, and it's um, it's the event that starts in October, finishes at the end of November, beginning of December. And, and every weekend, it's all the professional crews and this ginormous boats come down and they race out in the Solon. And, uh, and I usually help on the um, committee boat because obviously we need lots and lots and lots of volunteers for that sort of thing. Um, and I tend to help on the committee boat there. And it's the most exciting thing to see. You know, you're sat in the middle of the Solon on a committee boat. I'm usually, I'm usually, I'm usually raising the flags up and down. You're on the committee boat there, and um, 
the start, you know, the, the, the gun goes off for the start of, of a race. And the, and the races are all in different classes, different classes of boat. So the first class would start, the gun would go off, and they would go thundering past you across the start line. There'd be lots and lots of shouting, and they'd go off, and then a little while later, it'd be in the next class that goes, off goes the gun, and they go thundering across the start line past you. Uh, you know, you can get something like 120 boats out there. And that's, that's, that's fantastic. That's a fantastic thing to see. It's freezing cold, of course. You're like the Michelin man walking around the deck. You can hardly move. You've got so many clothes on. Of course, you're outside and it's cold. But that, that's fantastic. But, of course, we need a massive volunteer base for that. Lots and lots of people. So now, you know, not, now not having a bar manager, we... Um, Everything now is run by volunteers. I think we've only got two paid staff. We've got a secretary and we've got the chief instructor and a cleaner. Um, and everything else is run by volunteers. It's one of these clubs that is actually literally run by volunteers. Yeah, it's, it's good, you know, and it gives me something to do. I mean, I'm retired now. And what am I going to do? I don't want to actually sit watching the TV all day or things like that. And this, this gives me something. It gets me out of South Sea. You know, it gets me onto a boat, it gets me in the fresh air, and it gets me mixing with all sorts of people. It's brilliant. So, Tricia, what advice mm. would you give to someone who, after listening to this, is thinking, OK, well, maybe I'll just contact my local sailing club and just see what, what goes on? And, and Yes, absolutely. Just contact your local sailing club, yes. Or, you know, turn up on their doorstep and ask a few questions. Or... Look, up, look on their websites and go on to the bit that says contact us and just bash off an email. You always get an answer. You know, there's always a campaign every year about getting people on the water. So, um, yeah, that's what I'd say to people. If you want to you want to get into sailing, contact your local sailing club and hunt around. Look at all, the, um, look at all their websites because you may find that a lot of them, some of them will be a yachting club which will cost you mega bucks to join. You want to join a club that actually offers courses and classes where you can learn to sail. So, you know, have a, have a good old hunt around, ask around, ask people. Yes, do it that way. That's how I got into it, asking people and um, taking the plunge and taking myself along there. A lot of the membership fees for some sailing clubs are very, very expensive, but we managed to keep our membership, you know, quite low. You know, we don't have a restaurant like a lot of sailing clubs have or things like that. So we can keep our membership fees low. A club that's right for you and then you can do as much or as little as you want. Yeah. To yes, it. absolutely. If you want to yes. do it, yeah. Yes. Sure yeah. What's happening at the moment with COVID? I guess there is no sailing at the moment or is it beginning to open up? Some of the some of the mobs and wows have been going out. So, you know, if the weather's not too cold, they would go out, but they have to go out individually you know they, they can't hire they can't have any of the club boats they have to go out in their own boats at the moment but things things are starting to change i think the weekly sailing will start up actually i think the weekly sailing probably starts next week <laughs> once uh, once everyone's allowed um out in the open air six people out in the open air they'll all be able to go out again yeah. but the problem is you know the, the mixing of crews so I th we always have to wait for um, instructions from the RYA. You know, we do what they say that we should do. That's the Royal Yachting Association. So we adhere to their rules. If they say, you know, if they say that we can't go out in, you know, as mixed crews, then we can't. So we just abide by their instructions. So we, we're um, recording this the Tuesday after the Easter holidays. So now hopefully the good weather's going to come, calmer season. Yeah. Everyone is eager to get out there on yeah, the Yeah, everyone will be eager to get out. Yes. Absolutely fascinating. I yeah. think the story yeah. of you, because we worked together many years ago. That's how yes, we, we did. Together. Yes. And the fact that you changed your job, worked for a yachting company, I'm a great believer in being at the right place at the right time for something to happen. And I think you were meant mm. to get this job to lead you on yes. your journey. It was meant to be, wasn't it? Definitely. No, I would treat yeah. you. It's been absolutely <clears throat> fascinating. And I just wish you all your crews that they do manage to get out on the boats and 
can enjoy the water again in, in a safe environment, rather like all the other. Yes, oh, Trisha, thanks very yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. I hope you have enjoyed the conversation. Don't forget, if you have a story you would like to tell, please get in touch. My email address is allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com and thank you for listening.